Hello there. So I want to shoot a video that's actually a video of me doing something rather than sort of showing you before and after videos. Um, maybe I can pull this off. First of all, as far as my garage goes, I have this tendency to work in the garage until I get to a point where I can't move anymore. And then I completely clean stuff up and uh, start over. So you're catching me sort of at the point of almost maybe 71% saturation here, but I'm too lazy to clean this up. Uh, it's not like this is going to be a public video. So our goal for today is to take this Tesla-ish uh, brake booster. Uh, I say Tesla-ish because if I say Tesla, that's worth for like 12 views. Um, being a uh, buzzword. It's really off of a Honda CRV, I think. So I need to mount it here, which that part I already did. So we need to mount the Willwood uh, proportioning valve. And this truck started life as a drum drum operation and I upgraded the front brakes to disc. Now we could argue that there's no need to do that on an EV conversion because don't we use regenerative braking? Essentially, don't we use the electric motor to slow us down? So one could argue that drum brakes will be sufficient, but that's a thumb wrestle battle for another day. Now, I couldn't use the drum brake uh, proportioning valve, so I thought about getting one designed for these trucks because up to 1970 they were drum drum but in 71 they went to discs in the front so i could have purchased a 71 proportioning valve but that was proportioning chevy rears to chevy fronts type of deal um, using a chevy uh, brake booster and here we have that honda excuse me tesla uh, brake booster. So I went out and bought this uh, Willwood one because you know all the cool kids are running them and Fast Mad is using one. So uh, Slow Greg is going to use one as well. But this has to mount somewhere. Uh, the old one mounted on the side of the original brake booster using this uh, one bolt bracket. So I thought about where I want to mount this thing. Um, you can see that the lines come out here and I don't know if this is uh, front brakes in the front, rear in the rear. I've seen them reversed on some cars or trucks. And we have the lines going into this guy here. Hopefully if I flip it this way, then this will be, it will go front to front and rear to rear, maybe. And I'm wondering if I want to mount it up here somewhere off of this bolt. There might be another one on the other side. Or if I'm going to use these bolts, I'm kind of favoring these in the back of the bracket. Uh, I have nothing but the finest of metals here. This is honestly how I work, especially uh, COVID era and slightly post it, uh, just using junk metal. Nice thing about metal is that you can use uh, glue and glue it all together. Uh, standard issue angle bracket, maybe do something like this here and end up with it mounted somewhere here but I want I'm going to mount this to the firewall just to have a better feel for where I want it and how I want it to look and mount so we'll be back with uh, doing that portion 
All right, so the first thing I did is I put some blue tape on the firewall here just to prevent it from scratching up uh, the new paint. You know, the, that's how they do it on TV, so we're going to do it too. And uh, trying to just find the holes here somewhere. Yes, doing this with the iPhone in one hand because I it's either this or no video at all. Sometimes you reach that point in the project where it's just head down and you just want to do the work. So, did the same thing here. Hard to see with the light, but um, tape up here, keep it from scratching a little bit. The uh, really nice thing about trucks is that, yeah, that's the bed of the truck. Look at all that junk. You take it off and you put it in the bed of the truck and then as you're going through the project, you start taking it out and when you take out the last piece, hopefully there's nothing left, you put that on and you're done. So the truck is off the ground right now, that's why it's kind of ridiculous to get in here. I have two of these brackets. So I have two of these brake brackets because I butchered one up. I mean, I could weld it back on. It's only, uh, I only cut it up on one side to get the, to see if I can get the um, power steering, the Prius power steering in here. So I just cut up this little section here. I kept the pieces, I can weld it back in. But um, I bought another bracket just so that I don't have to do that if I don't want to. Um, I'm gonna try it with this bracket. The uh, well, the other one I think only has three studs on it, of course. But let's take a look at the other one. Let's see if I can reach it. So the gentleman who sold it to me had it uh, media blasted already. Mine is partially media blasted and started doing it and then well, I was having some issues with the blasting cabinet or the gun. Anyway, this one is missing one of the four studs and of course, is it on the side? Yeah, it's on the side I think that um, we want to uh, hang the bracket off of. So I think I'm just going to install this one and that's these four studs are what this bracket uh, attaches to for the brake booster and basically the firewall goes here and it does the Oreo cookie sort of sandwich sandwiches it and that's how it hangs so hopefully I'll have this mounted and we'll move on. All right, so I have the brake pedal assembly installed there temporarily. Studs are sticking out and that's what this side looks like. There's the bracket. And basically now we need to attach this brake booster to it. Oh man, this is pretty heavy. I don't think I can do it with one hand, but that's where it's gonna go. All right, so the brake booster is on. It's on there just for some eyeballism so that I can get a better perspective where I want the bracket. Um, kind of takes the guessing game out of, out of it, doing it on the floor versus actually doing it on the vehicle, so. This should be tighter. Okay, I'll tighten those up. And actually, I think the bracket's gonna be mounting off of these. But now that I look at it, we could even go off of those, depending where we end up with this proportioning valve. So, lines come out of here. 
This could sit back there if I wanted to put it there. Probably has to be below the below the situation here. Um, yeah, so that gives me another option now. These these it mounts through, so I think it kind of wants to sit like that on the firewall. Anyway, something to think about. So yeah, let me show you this. This is the joys of building these things. Um, you ever try removing paint and you have to buy expensive uh, aircraft paint remover? And then one freaking drop of brake fluid on my frame and the paint like fell off. Unreal, man. So that's why I painted this all black. Just, I mean, I'm just gonna give it a squirt later and paint it over, but I've even tried using brake fluid to remove paint thinking, hey, when that, if that happens, it's gotta be a good paint remover. Nope, wouldn't remove squat, but when you don't want it to remove something, there it goes. All right, I think I found a plate here, 316, definitely thicker than 18, but a bit of an overkill. I don't like doing that, but oh well. It's long enough to where it can drop the bracket, so I'll cut along that line, drill two holes, that will give me the down strip and I might use the remainder of this material uh, to make it go out this way so I can mount then the uh, Willwood um, brake, um, whatever the hell it is called, contortionist valve. So yeah, gonna try that. All right, here we go. We managed to get this cut on our plasma cutter. And uh, now all we have to do is just uh, poke two holes in it and that might could work as our down bracket or portion of the bracket. Yes, we will deburr it and uh, shine it up a bit here next. All right, so we got this deburred and shined up and uh, to make a fine prison shank or a proportioning valve bracket. And now we need to poke two holes in here. And I know there's a million and seven ways to transfer holes, but um, I don't trust any of them. There's only one way I do it, and uh, it's the good old wax on, wax off. So I'll take the bracket off and uh, hold this up to it. And uh, using the old Sharpie method, just transfer the holes. That's pretty much the only way I trust myself to get them semi right. So there we have it, brake booster erectus. Now, we wanna transfer the holes to this bracket here. And I don't know if you can tell, but if you slide it all the way up against it, it's not gonna be flush. So that's one thing I'm noticing. And the other thing is that you may be tempted to just say, well, why don't we just hold it up in the back, you know, like this, and then take a Sharpie from this side and transfer the holes. Well, that's because this bracket doesn't go all the way in like that. I don't know, I'm spending so much time showing you guys how to drill two holes and I'll probably still F it up. But anyway, the point is for you young Padawans, just to kind of take your time. Um, and this, as the saying goes, there's never time to do it right, but always time to do it over. So try to do it right the first time, take your time and um, uh, usually the right way is, is the time-consuming way, right? But it could save you time in the long run. So I'm planning on clampetizing this bracket and then transferring the holes from the back. And you can just, this doesn't have to be super perfect, you know, but uh, just, uh, you know, using a Sharpie. I have one of those transfer punches. The one thing you can see here is either my shady work or I would say the factory shady work. Do you see how the factory bracket? So this here is not something I made, okay? There were like five million of these brackets made on these Chevy trucks. And the first time I tried to adapt the Honda slash Tesla booster to this bracket, 
I made the whole symmetrical and it bit me because I went to mount it and they wouldn't align because this is really potty wampus. I don't know if you can tell, but the left side is lower than the right, if I can hold this right. So, and you can see a better example here, I think, with these two. Not, not like it freaking matters, but I'm showing it to you anyway. The point is, see how that one doesn't even touch? So that's why I take shit off and I actually drill holes against it. I don't calculate or like take measurements. I just touch things, metal together and I transfer holes because these old trucks are so inaccurate to begin with, you know? Uh, I joke like when uh, I used to paint houses with my dad and we used to joke that, you know, three quarter inch gap and we just cock it and it's all good. So like with this, they have huge tolerances. It's insane. And maybe what makes these trucks so great that, you know, um, they, they have such huge uh, tolerances. But anyway, I'm rambling. I got to um, punch some holes in this guy. So hopefully uh, in the next uh, section, we'll have this mounted and move one step closer to being done. All right, guys, so we got the clampulator on there. And this ensures that this is flush. And now I'm going to just use the uh, sharpulator here to draw some circles on there and uh, get them punched. Oh, for Christ's sakes, drill the damn hole, man. So these guys have a little tip on them and I forget what they're called, but they're perfect for getting the center of the hole. So I'm going to go one step further because, you know, the whole world's watching. So this has got to be perfect now. And here we go. See how they're not in the middle of the darn bracket? They're kind of to the side more. Yeah. So if we were to uh, measure and guesstimate and use our icrometers, we would probably end up with these holes in the middle and they wouldn't uh, bolt up later to this because they wouldn't be aligned right. All right, so I got the bracket, two holes drilled in it. Hopefully it fits on here. There's this little guy poking out here, so it makes it almost impossible to put it on like this. So, let's see here. All right, it's on there. And then we got the rest of it. So. I'm going to cut this sort of out of bias here. Give it, make it look a little bit sexier. Well done on there. And the wheel wood proportioning valve is going to go on here. Like that. And hopefully Bob's your uncle. All right, so we got our second piece cut. It's just going to be a two-part bracket like this. And the contortionist valve is going to sit on it. So mechanics really need to evolve into uh, being three-armed bandits so here we go this type of looksy feel so next step is a uh, super camera work see those two hole thingies we've got to transfer those over to our little plate so let's do that Alright, here we have the bracket with the two holes. That's going to go on, on there like this. I have some carriage bolts, which are the only thing I could find that's long enough. They're not going to be the final solution here. This is just um, temporary to bolt it on. Okay, so the, the bracket is attached. It's kind of half-assed, but it's on there. It's aligned. Uh, 
uh, the bolts just have that um, squarish end on them so they don't spin as designed for the right application. So here it's just going to go like this. And uh, hopefully once we glue that on there, that'll be it. So I just want to show you um, how I have to keep my brain from kicking into overthinking mode. This is a simple two-piece bracket. A um, couple solutions for welding it on. We can just slide it and weld it on here, um, like so. Or we can put it on top of it, still on the edge, but flush this way. But I decided that um, maybe I'll just put it right in the middle. That should be allow me to weld it from both sides not like it needs it but you know just just for funsies there's still clearance room but yeah so you can take a simple task and over complicate it so i'm just going to tack this before my brain changes its mind all right so this is my little welding setup here absolutely love this welder um, don't mistake this for the big box store lincoln 140. Uh, this is uh what well, I would call more would be like an industrial model or a commercial model. I have no idea what the C stands for, but it's totally a uh, different beast. Here's my little setup. Just a little magnet on there to hold it. And uh, I'm gonna tack it and then see if I can weld it. All right, and it's welded. So I'm uh, going to let that cool and then um, try it on. All right, guys, let's take a look at this bracket. You know what they say, grinder and paint make me the welder I ain't. So let's see how she fits on here. If she fits, okay, there you can see some clearances, all to factory spec. I like it. I'm going to like it till I find out why I don't like it. Um, let's put the uh, contortionist valve on there and see what happens. All right, here we have it. It's mounted to the bracket. Of course, the bracket is going to get powder coated, but let's see if it fits with it on there. It's on there. Actually, I'm going to mount you later. And I got a question. Oh, super. Could this be a reason why I don't like it then? Oh. Clearance. This is this is to German spec. They give you just enough room to get to what you need, and then, as my buddy jokes, they take away half an inch. Tongue in cheek, folks. Tongue in cheek. Okay. So the question is, do you guys have any of what I call these gimmick tools? This is a ratch ratcheting. Uh, what do you call it spanner over there or a box wrench or whatever definitely not a um, socket set and I call these gimmick tools because they're pretty much useless like I can't get in there and I, I call them like fence tools like you can mend a fence with these with like an acre of clearance on either end so I have them um, and those are actually from Harbor Freight back in the day where on rare occasion they sold something decent. So it's back to, you know, the good old craftsmen and I've had these for 40 years. Um, my dad turned me on to craftsmen, but you know, today's craftsman is not, you know, uh, your dad's craftsman, which is not your grandfather's craftsman, but these uh, were still good tools back then. And I like using my craftsman because when I help somebody wrench or they help me, um, no one ever wants them because, you know, craftsmen, they suck and I don't have to put my name on them because they all grab their million dollar snap-ons or their generic 
Pittsburgh Harbor Freighters and leave my crappy craftsman alone, which I've used for 30, 40 years. And uh, no, I'm not that old, but um, I ranched with my dad since I was 10, not by choice. And some of you know, you know, you know how that goes. I was the hand me that wrench specialist. So I'm liking this gentleman. Pardon the rants and all, but this is good stuff. Um, brings me one step closer to having to do the brake lines, which I dread. So I'm gonna have to find something else to work on. Will this turn as it's supposed to? I think so, that's the whole beauty of this adjustable one but that's on there solid and i hope it's pretty tucked in there too so i'm happy with it let me know in the comments how much you love it you know we'll do one of these satisfaction surveys of i'm very satisfied i'm uniquely satisfied i'm extremely satisfied or any of the above well, that was fun, guys. Thanks for joining me. I hope this video turns out. May even have sound. Sorry about the crappy camera work. But yeah, that's one task done. See you in the next one.